Hello, Jamaicans. The new coronavirus, COVID-19, has spread to more than 60 countries, fueling widespread fear and anxiety as many consider the implications for themselves and for public health generally. Here in Jamaica, we understand that anxiety and wish to reassure the public that we are, even now, enhancing our readiness for the very real possibility of the virus coming to our shores, even while we make all efforts to prevent it from coming. Up to March 1, there were more than 87,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 reported globally and close to 3,000 deaths. Among those countries impacted are three from within the Caribbean, namely the Dominican Republic, St. Barts, and St. Martin. So far, Jamaica has had no cases of COVID-19. However, we can accept, given the rate of spread, which has been more than 30 new countries impacted in the last week alone, that Jamaica is not immune to COVID-19. We can also accept that it is not beyond our capacity to respond and to do so effectively in the public health interest. Such has been our history in the face of other global disease outbreaks, including H1N1, SARS, and Ebola. Against this background, Jamaica's assault on COVID-19, for which robust and ongoing public support is critical, is happening on two fronts. Actions to minimize the risk of exposure among the local population and actions to enhance the capacity of the public health system to manage patients in the event that we have cases here in Jamaica. On minimizing the exposure we have through collaboration with a wide cross-section of stakeholders from the public and private sectors and through the adoption of a whole of government approach, impose travel restrictions to include five countries, among them China, Italy, South Korea, Singapore, and Iran, discourage non-essential travel, patrolling unofficial border crossings, sensitize key personnel at all air and seaports, designated four quarantine facilities, and identified and retrofitted isolation facilities in each of the island's public hospitals. On our health system's readiness, we have developed the local capacity to test for the virus thanks to the training provided by the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, assess the readiness of our health facilities to meet the anticipated increase in demand on services, are addressing existing gaps, including with respect of additional supplies and equipment, though at the present time, we have enough protective equipment in the island for our health facilities. We also have adequate stores of respiratory medicine for the next three months. In addition, we have trained and continue to train healthcare providers. These efforts are supported by a communications campaign to keep each member of the population updated on the virus and its impacts. Oversight is provided by the Multisectorial National Disaster Risk Management Council, led by the Most Honorable Prime Minister Andrew Holness, to which the Ministry of Health and Wellness will present a detailed response plan for approval. In the coming week, we will provide an update on the National Mobilization Plan to continue our risk prevention strategy or to treat with the possibility of the virus coming to Jamaica. Still, the success of our efforts depends on the extent to which stakeholders from the private and public sectors, and indeed every individual who calls Jamaica home, understands that they each have a role to play to preserve public health. This week, we will also appoint a national COVID-19 coordinating task force to monitor the implementation plan. We must, therefore, work together to maintain a high level of vigilance in our surveillance and response measures. It is also now more important than ever that each of us maintain a distance of at least two meters from persons who are coughing or sneezing, frequently perform hand hygiene by washing hands thoroughly with soap and water or using a hand sanitizer if hands are not visibly soiled, cover our mouths and noses with a tissue when coughing or sneezing and discarding it, and avoid touching our faces unnecessarily. Yes, COVID-19 is a disease that can cause death, 
but in the majority of cases, those affected by the virus survive. If we work together as a community, each of us doing our part, from prevention to care management, we can and will overcome this public health threat.